Nvidia's next generation of graphics cards is on the horizon, and thanks to some interesting leaks, we've got a better idea of what's potentially coming. Codenamed Blackwell, this architecture is set to power the RTX 50 series, with early information suggesting we'll see an announcement at CES in January 2025. So whether you're eyeing up an upgrade or just curious about where GPU technology is heading, understanding what Blackwell might bring to the table is crucial for making informed decisions about future gaming and workstation-based builds. In this video, we're diving deep into what we know and what we suspect about Nvidia's next generation architecture, from potential performance gains to new features. We're covering all the key aspects that might influence your future upgrade plans. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. <sighs> I'm never going to be an esports gamer. I never get any kills. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Is that Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com? Yes, my son. It is me, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com. What are you doing here? I'm here to bestow upon you a gift that will transform you into a true gamer. With a 24.5 inch full HD screen, 240 hertz refresh rate, 0.5 millisecond response time, AMD FreeSync Premium, and height adjustability, you'll be gaming in the big leagues in no time. Oh, thank you. No problem, my son. Why don't you check out the link in the description below to find out more. So let's start with what we know for certain. The Blackwell codename was first revealed during the Nvidia hack in 2022, confirming it as the architecture behind the RTX 50 series. Now, this wasn't just a random leak, it was part of a significant data breach that revealed several of Nvidia's future plans, such as Hopper and Ada Lovelace, which was then confirmed to be the RTX 40 series. Now, looking at Nvidia's historical release patterns, we typically see about a two year gap between architectures, and Blackwell seems to be following this timeline too. As for the lineup structure, current information suggests we'll see a staggered release pattern similar to what we've seen in previous generations, starting with the high end models. Now, we're expecting to see the RTX 5090 and 5080 initially, with unconfirmed reports that manufacturers have received news to prepare for an announcement at CES in January of 2025, as briefly alluded to earlier. Now, the RTX 5070 remains a big unknown, but don't be surprised if it's staggered till after the 5080 and 5090 launch that actually come together, and then potentially that leads to around a March or April kind of timeframe. Though this could also come a little later as, well, at this point, nothing is set in stone and confirmed as of yet. Now, pricing is where things get, I guess, very interesting and potentially concerning for many gamers. Now, early expectations suggest that we will see prices push even higher than the Lovelace generation, especially if you go by current wording from Nvidia regarding how their sales are performing for the RTX 40 series. Now, the RTX 5090 is rumored to land somewhere in the $1,600 to $2,000 MSRP range, while the 5080 will follow at around $1,200 to $1,500. Now, this continues the trend of increasing flagship GPU prices that we've seen over the past few generations. And for context, remember that the RTX 4090 launched at $1,599, and we're potentially looking at a significant step up from that. This pricing strategy suggests Nvidia is confident in Blackwell's performance advantages, especially if word of AMD dropping out of the high end game is, well, true. But it also, I guess, raises questions about accessibility for mainstream gamers. Now, when it comes to architectural improvements, while specific details are still under wraps, we can make some educated guesses based on Nvidia's traditional generational leaps. Blackwell is expected to build upon Ada Lovelace's foundation, potentially offering a 50 to 70% improvement in raw performance, a typical target for Nvidia's generational jump, so nothing new there. Given that Ada Lovelace already pushed the boundaries with up to 76 billion transistors in the AD102 die, we could actually see Blackwell potentially approaching or exceeding 100 billion transistors, though this would likely come at the cost of an even larger die size since we're expecting it to use the same 4N process. Now this could have implications for both manufacturing costs and yields, potentially contributing to those higher price points that we mentioned earlier. So at least I guess there's some reasoning behind it all. Now, the efficiency improvements are expected to be notable, particularly in how the architecture handles workloads. We might see more specialized processing units for specific tasks, similar to how Nvidia has continuously evolved their RT and Tensor cores. This could mean better performance per watt, which would, I guess, be crucial given the potential power requirements of these cards, and also what we saw on the RTX 40 series, new power connectors and all of that. But don't worry, it does seem like this power connector is here to stay at least for this generation. 
Now, speaking of manufacturing, well, this might be a bit disappointing for those hoping for a massive leap forward. Current speculation points to Blackwell utilizing TSMC's 4N process. So yes, the same node used for Ada Lovelace. And this could be a significant limiting factor for Blackwell's potential. Without the benefits of a node shrink, NVIDIA will need to rely solely on architectural improvements to deliver generation over generation gains, or potentially push power limits even higher than we've seen with Ada Lovelace. For context, we're already seeing the RTX 4090 pulling serious power under load. So any additional power draw to compensate for staying on the 4N process could make thermal and power supply requirements, well, even more demanding. Sure, mature nodes typically mean better yields and potentially better availability at launch, but in all honesty, that's small comfort if it means compromising on efficiency improvements. While Nvidia has proven that they can extract impressive performance gains through architectural enhancements alone, staying on 4N puts additional pressure on them to innovate in other areas to justify what will likely be a premium pricing product for the RTX 50 series. Whilst Nvidia used Samsung for their supplier for Ampere, given that Jensen has said TSMC recently helped fix a design flaw with Blackwell, I guess you could say that it's fair to say they'll be using them this time round for this new generation of RTX 50 series GPUs. Now, in terms of ray tracing capabilities, because, well, we all know NVIDIA are all in, they're expected to see another significant leap forward with Blackwell. While specific details about the RT core improvements are still under wraps, we're anticipating better ray tracing performance across the board. And this is more important now than ever, as more games adopt ray tracing features and developers push for more complex lighting scenarios that are literally baked into the game, with the only options being to dial the capabilities up or down instead of blanket turning them off completely, with the likes of Black Myth Wukong being a prime example. Now, looking at the generational improvements that we've seen so far, from the RTX 20 series to the 30 series and then to the 40 series, each jump has roughly doubled ray tracing performance. And well, if this trend continues, Blackwell could make full ray trace games at high frame rates much more achievable for, let's say, the average gamer, someone who's not gonna buy the stupidly high end. Now, in terms of AI, the AI performance through tentacles is also expected to see substantial improvements, which could have major implications for both gaming and content creation workloads. This is especially relevant given the growing importance of AI in gaming features. Now, we've seen Nvidia consistently double down on AI capabilities with each generation, and Blackwell is likely to continue this trend, especially as AI is the big buzzword at the moment. Now, one of the most interesting aspects of Blackwell's release timelines aligns with some major software developments at NVIDIA, and this could all kind of tie in. The NVIDIA app is expected to exit beta around the same time as Blackwell's launch, and there's also speculation about a potential DLSS 4.0 release too. While we should take this, I guess, with a grain of salt, the timing makes sense. NVIDIA often pairs major hardware launches with significant software improvements, and this could mean even better upscaling and frame generation capabilities, so pushing the boundaries of what's possible with AI-enhanced gaming. Now, moving on from that, memory technology. This might see some significant advances too. While it's too early to confirm whether we will see GDDR7, we're definitely expecting improvements in both capacity and bandwidth. And high-end models like the RTX 5090 will likely push memory configurations further, potentially offering in the 24 to 32 gig range of VRAM. This would be particularly relevant for content creators and professionals working with large data sets or high resolution textures. Then the impact on gaming could be substantial too, especially as games that are coming out or are already out continue to grow in complexity and obviously needing more resource demands. Now, when it comes to power consumption and efficiency, I honestly feel that they're gonna be hot topics with Blackwell, quite literally. Given the expected performance improvements, there's concern about potential power requirements, especially for this flagship model. We're likely to see varying TDP targets across the lineup, with the RTX 5090 potentially pushing power limits even further than its predecessor. This means cooling solutions and power supply requirements will remain crucial considerations for system builders. And we might see some cards actually requiring 450 watts or more under full load, which could necessitate new cooling solutions and potentially even new power delivery standards. Though it is unlikely because we've already seen ATX 3.1 and we already have the 12 VH PWR connector. So I guess we could speculate, but it's probably unlikely. Now for gaming performance, expectations are running high. While it's still 
early for specific numbers, the combination of architectural improvements and potential DLSS advancements could deliver significant gains over the RTX 40 series. This could be particularly noticeable in ray trace titles and at higher resolutions like 4K and 8K. The real question is how these improvements will translate to real world gaming scenarios, especially in titles that heavily utilize DLSS and frame gen technologies. We're also seeing games becoming increasingly demanding, with new engines and features pushing hardware requirements even higher. And Blackwell needs to not just match current demands, but prepare for future gaming innovations too, especially if we're talking about a two year lifespan. Now, when it comes to content creation and productivity users, they might see some of the most significant benefits from Blackwell. The expected improvements in compute performance coupled with enhanced memory configurations could accelerate workflows in applications like Blender, DaVinci Resolve, and other professional software. The potential improvements in AI performance could also enable new features and capabilities for content creators, particularly in emerging areas like AI assisted video editing and 3D modeling, stuff that we actually use in house. Then in terms of connectivity, this is another area where Blackwell might bring some interesting changes. PCIe 5.0 support seems likely, potentially offering benefits for future games and applications that can utilize the increased bandwidth. The timing here is particularly interesting though, as we're expecting both AMD's RDNA 4 and Blackwell to potentially adopt PCIe 5.0 in its entirety, marking a significant shift in GPU connectivity. Display output options will also likely improve and we'll see the likes of HDMI 2.1a and DisplayPort 2.1, keeping pace with the latest display technologies. And this could be relevant as we see more high refresh 4K and 8K displays entering the market, though they are still, well, very expensive. As for multi-GPU support, it's looking increasingly likely that we might see this feature continue to fade away, following the industry trend away from multi-GPU gaming setups. And this, well, isn't surprising given the diminishing returns and complexity of implementing multi-GPU support in modern games. We actually mentioned this in a previous video where we spoke about multi-GPUs and well, what happened. So if you haven't seen that, definitely go and check it out. Now, in terms of market positioning, this is gonna be crucial for Blackwell's success. With AMD continuing to compete strongly in the high-end GPU space, Nvidia's pricing strategy could face significant scrutiny. Though, depending on what AMD do, this could actually go in Nvidia's favor. Now the rumored price points that I spoke about earlier of $1,600 to $2,000 for the RTX 5090 and then $1,200 to $1,500 for the 5080 suggest that Nvidia is confident in the value proposition of these cards, despite the premium pricing. And we're seeing this in the server GPU market too. However, this pricing strategy comes at a time when many gamers are already feeling priced out of the high-end GPU market. So the success of these cards will likely depend not just on raw performance, but on how well Nvidia can justify these price points through features and capabilities that maybe AMD and even Intel might struggle to match. Now the competitive landscape is also worth considering. As I mentioned earlier, AMD's RDNA 4 architecture is expected to launch in a similar timeframe. And even Intel are continuing to develop their ARC graphic solutions, now known as Battle Mage. This three-way competition could influence pricing and feature sets across the industry. Though as I mentioned earlier, Nvidia may have the high-end market completely sewn up. This is further shown by Nvidia's premium pricing strategy, which suggests they're betting on maintaining their performance leadership, but they'll need to deliver compelling advantages to justify the cost difference. Looking ahead, and obviously it's a hard one because we are a few months out, but Blackwell represents an interesting challenge for Nvidia. While it's another generation of graphics cards, it might mark a different kind of advancement in GPU technology, one focused on architectural innovation rather than process node improvements. By staying on 4N, Nvidia will need to prove that they can deliver meaningful performance gains through design improvements alone. And well, this could actually lead to some innovative solutions in how they approach performance scaling, even if it means compromising on the likes of power efficiency. The combination of new hardware capabilities and software features like improved DLSS functionality will need to do the heavy lifting to justify the generational upgrade, especially given the expected premium pricing. Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is this launch could also set interesting precedents for how GPU manufacturers approach future generations when, well, node shrinks aren't maybe immediately available or viable. The timing of Blackwell's launch could also be significant. By early 2025, we will likely see more games designed specifically for current gen consoles, potentially pushing PC hardware requirements even higher. And this could make Blackwell's performance improvements particularly relevant for gamers wanting to maintain high frame rates at 4K and above. As with any new hardware launch, it's wise to 
wait for independent benchmarks and real-world testing before making any decisions, which we'll no doubt do once we, you know, get our hands physically on the cards. But right now, and this is complete honesty and truth, I know nothing about the physical part of the card. We haven't seen them. I don't think anyone has other than NVIDIA. Even probably NVIDIA partners haven't seen, well, frankly, anything yet. Remember, most of what we've discussed today is based on leaks and rumors and industry analysis. And while the 2022 hack gave us some concrete information about Blackwell's development, many details could change before any official announcement, as, well, only NVIDIA themselves truly know what Blackwell holds. But we'll be sure to bring you updates as more information becomes available. So definitely, as always, watch this space. For now, that's gonna wrap this one up on our early look at NVIDIA's Blackwell architecture and the RTX 50 series as a whole. If you found this helpful, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, consider supporting us over on Patreon, where you'll get access to a whole host of goodies, including behind the scenes content, access to our testing data, bi-weekly game nights, meetups at our offices, and much, much more. The link is as always down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.